channel. So today we are doing a Q&A. I hopped on Instagram the other day and asked for you guys to ask me any questions you have, and I got some good ones. Also, I do have a cold, so that's why I may sound kind of sniffy, congested. Yeah, it's great. Winter. So first question in no particular order. This is from Danielle Stavlo. And she says, what are you currently watching on Netflix slash Hulu? What series do you find yourself watching over and over again? Okay, so good question, Danielle. I am actually currently watching Downton Abbey right now, and that is a series that I watch over and over again. I love that there's like a bunch of seasons of Downton Abbey, so you don't always remember everything when you go back and watch it. And I love BBC British films. I love love stories and I love like slight suspense. There's not that much suspense in Downton Abbey, but I do like not knowing what's gonna happen. Another series I go back to watching frequently, and this is not like a TV series, this is like a movie series, but I love watching Hunger Games, and I'm kind of in the mood for watching Hunger Games, especially lately, so I might be incorporating that into like my Downton Abbey mix, <laughs> because I'm only in like season two right now of Downton Abbey, and there's like five or six, so I love the Hunger Games movies. Betty Otero, o Otero she says, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? So, hmm, I really do enjoy Washington State. It's beautiful. So I would have to almost say Washington. I love where I live. There's just, there's something about Washington and the mountains and the ocean and the different seasons. And I just really love Washington, but it is a little cold for me. I don't mind the rain, but I really, I need to be warm. <laughs> so maybe like Palm Springs. Oh, I don't know, maybe I would hate it there because there's so many people and like everything's expensive. But I would say like California, maybe like Northern California along the coast. Okay, so this question is actually from a friend of mine. Her name is Molly, but her blog site and her YouTube channel is called Lovely You by Molly. And I'll go ahead and link her YouTube channel down below. She just started and I really love her heart behind her channel and what she wants to do with it. And she's just so sweet. So we go to the same church. So. Um, in her question, she says, Ella, you're so funny. It was fun to sit with you at church today. And it was, she's so sweet and inviting. And she's like, hey, come sit with me. And I, I just love her. So she says, I have a question. What's your favorite makeup brand of all time? That might be a hard one to pick. Honestly, it's like really hard to think about like one specific makeup brand that I love the best. But I would have to probably say, I would say higher end would probably have to be Tarte. And more like drugstore, I would say CoverGirl. Yeah, CoverGirl. And again, guys, go ahead and check out Molly's channel. She has such a sweetheart and she has such a cute family and I just love her. Marissa0303 says, my question for you is, was it weird at first having Natalie vlog around you? And how long did it take for you to get used to her bringing the camera out at family events? Um, since it was so long ago, I have to think. Uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie, we were very, like, I feel like we were all pretty supportive from the beginning, but we were like, wow, like, this world of YouTube is such a new thing, and, like, I don't know, we just kind of... We were intrigued by it. Like it wasn't that we didn't watch YouTube videos beforehand, but we definitely just weren't aware of like how vast of a world YouTube is and just all of that. We just weren't yeah, we just weren't aware of that. I mean I guess I was kind of like uncomfortable at first when she would bring the camera out, but now I'm just like, hey, what's up? I'm like, giving the double chin to the camera. Uh, you know, obviously making my own videos now. <laughs> Okay, so Ken23Netty says, why did you make the decision not to attend college directly after high school? I don't know if it all entirely has to do with my view on this, but I really just like didn't have anything I wanted to pursue career-wise. I want to be a wife and a mom, like that's my ultimate goal. Um, and at first in high school, I just didn't give it too much thought. I was like, no, nah, like I just wanna, you know, I don't really wanna pursue a career, I just want to be a wife and mom. 
And then like when you get older and it's like your last year of high school and like you're graduating, everyone's asking you what you're doing, like there is a pressure there and you're like, ah, oh, dang. I just kind of have to like deal with myself in that situation and be like, okay, like why am I so frustrated? I shouldn't give in to peer pressure. I tried dental assisting for a little bit and that really wasn't my thing. Like it was, it was pediatric dental assisting and it just kind of, it, it sounded nice to be able to like do that and say that I do that and I thought maybe I'd be interested in it but come to find out that was not my thing so I kind of like in a way gave in to peer pressure tried out dental assisting realized okay no like it's okay that I don't have like this career that I'm pursuing and I just decided if I'm working at a job like as a barista and I'm getting you know like tips and I'm just earning my paycheck and I'm saving up that's okay like I'm saving up money and I'm working, and I'm doing something with my time, and then like later I started YouTube. So that's kind of where I'm at with that whole thing. I still have yet to be like, oh, I want to be a physical therapist or anything like that. And I think God made me like that for a reason. Like I, I'm sure he will fulfill my dream of being a wife and mom one day. And so I just have to kind of like sit tight and be okay with the fact that maybe I haven't chosen the most normal path to not go into college, but um, now that I'm older and I've had more time to think about it, like, I'm really okay with it. Like, working a job and, like, being involved in YouTube and, like, all this stuff, that is so okay. And my parents have always been so supportive in that and told me that that's totally normal and okay to not want to get to college. And the more I think about it, the more I'm just blessed that this is where I'm at. Okay, this is a fun question. Candice Marie 105 says, what is your Valentine's Day candy of choice? My Valentine's Day candy of choice would be, <laughs> I feel like this is cheating, but it would be the Reese's Heart Chocolate Candy with, you know, like the peanut butter filling because it's Reese's. Is that lame? Like Reese's is my favorite candy, so that, I don't know. I don't care if it's lame, that's, that's my. That's my candy of choice, okay? My second candy of choice for Valentine's Day would be the conversation hearts. They can't be hard and like, when you bite into them, they like break. No, they have to be like gooey. Not gooey, but like, you know, like soft. Soft. Okay, so this next question is so sweet. Danielle Co. Danielle C.O.E. says, Hey girly, you're such an inspiration of true joy in Christ. You seem so confident and genuinely content in this time of waiting, singleness, and how the Lord is going to move in your life. How are you able to get to this stage of joyful contentment? And do you have encouraging words for us young women who are also in this beautiful time of waiting? Thank you, Danielle. That is so sweet that you say that. And, um, gosh. I don't know how to answer that because I'm not always like, I'm not always super content in being single. Like there is a huge part of me, I mean, I am almost 21 year old woman and there's a huge part inside of me that just longs to be a wife and then one day a mom and just like have my own house and like just that love, to experience that love and um, your soulmate, right? And I want to be open and transparent about that. And I haven't really talked that much about the fact that I've been single for like, oh gosh, over a year. I've only been in like one real legit relationship. Um, there's been like little things here and there throughout high school, but um, it it's hard dealing with breakups um, and it's hard being single. So uh, depending on the kind of breakup you go through, um, it kind of almost affects your single state, in my opinion, and mine was a hard one to go through, but at the same time, like, I am right where God wants me, and now I have that perspective, and it's so crazy to see how time can heal a person, how time can change a person, and so, words of encouragement, I just want you to know that it's okay that you feel lonely, because I know how that feels, like, when you're single and you're, like, you just don't have, you just don't have that love that you want. Uh, but encouragement would be just hold on to God. Seek Him harder than you ever had before. Just cling to God. And this is something I've had to practice and learn too. But just continually remind yourself that 
God has you in this sweet spot with him for a reason. You are not being distracted by anything and this is for a reason. And I've noticed in those times when I was like hormonal or like lonely or just sad and emotional, I would think like, why don't I have a man right now? And then I would think, okay, but what if I just like was with someone, just anyone, and it wasn't the right one for me and God is waiting to put the right person in my life. And I just instantly was like, wait, no, 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 I don't want the wrong person. I don't want to deal with the wrong person. I don't, I, I want this to be in God's timing. So that's what I'd encourage you with is to cling to God and then to also to have a little more perspective on the situation that God, he's looking at the situation going, oh, just you wait, my daughter. I have someone perfect for you. And that's not to say that the next person he brings along is the right one for you, but it going through stuff like this just makes you grow so much and being single has been a huge gift that I didn't even realize I would enjoy <laughs> uh, that I needed like just so much that I needed to learn from experiencing singleness as a young woman coming from a family where my mom and my sisters married young and um, even though I'm still young now, I'm gonna be older than all of them than when they got married. So to all those single ladies, I am so with you and I sympathize with you, but I also want you to know like, there's so much more to singleness than I think we first view it as. And it's also nothing to be ashamed about. Just because you're single doesn't mean that you're not desirable. So many girls out there think that once they have someone, then that makes them look desirable. But you know what I'm learning? The older I get, nobody cares. Nobody cares who you're dating in the long run. Like, nobody cares. I mean, the people close to you genuinely care and love you and want you to be happy. But, like, as far as your appearance or how you feel like you're being viewed socially, nobody really gives a crap, like, if you have a boyfriend or not. They'll forget about it. They won't even remember his name. Sure, they'll like your cute couple photo on Instagram, but... Just don't get too lost in that. In early high school, I was a little more concerned as far as that goes, and this just comes to anything, whether you're talking about being single and worried how people view you, or your appearance, or your, your uh, whether you're going to college or not, like how successful you are. Nobody really cares. That was a bit of a long-winded answer, and I, I almost feel like I could make a longer video on it with a little more like structure. Uh, because I almost have, I feel like I have a lot to say on this subject, so hopefully I didn't say too much, but good question. Thank you for that question. So, Sandria Media Studio Latino says, what is your dream career and where do you want to travel to next? So, my dream career would honestly be having like a full-time job with YouTube. That would be so awesome. My sister Natalie, she just hit 100,000 subscribers and that's crazy it's like you know it's her job and she puts so much into it and like i think she's so deserving of it because she puts so much effort into it and she's so humble at the same time sometimes i'm a little sheepish when i say like oh i'd love it to be youtube like i'd love to make money from youtube like as a full-time gig um but i mean if i'm just being honest i think that would be cool because i do enjoy making youtube videos for fun anyway so it would be nice to, to have that be a career. Next question is, where do you want to travel to next? So I want to travel to someplace warm where there is palm trees and a pretty beach. Lindsay N. Smiles says, what's your favorite type of cereal? I really like Captain Crunch, even though it like rips apart the roof of my mouth and it's like crap cereal, so I never eat it. I like Reese's Puffs. I like Honey Bunches of Oats with strawberries. That I will eat if we have it in the house. I really try not to have junk cereal. And I like granola. I don't know if that counts as cereal, but like granola and milk. Mm -hmm. Especially homemade. Okay, so for the next question, Queen Phoenix asks, what age would you prefer to have kids? And do you have a crush right now? Any dates? Well, I would prefer to have kids and hopefully my husband is like tracking on the same page with me but um, I prefer to have kids before I'm 30 probably like right around like 25 ish um, but it might be later it depends on like when I get married when everything lines up because like honestly like I really want to have at least a couple years of newly wedded marital 
bliss. I want to have a couple years of being newly married um, and just spend that special time with my husband that I'll never get ever again because once you have kids, it's just not the same, right? But hopefully that happens before 30. And then she says, do you have a crush right now? So, um, next question. Okay, so Tatiya says, <laughs> how tall are you, Christina? I am five foot two, like, and a half. Um, maybe I'm five foot three. I've always thought that I was five foot two, like, my whole grown life. But my, my little sister, Anna, who has been always shorter than me and still is, insists that the doctors told her she was five foot two. So, um, yeah, I go with like five foot two, five foot two and a half, five foot three. Okay, well, I got through a lot of questions. Thank you for all the messages I got. I love you guys so much. I really mean that. Like, I really mean that. I love this community and it's just growing and we hit 5k like a week or so ago and that's, you know, that's cool. It's like the first big milestone I feel like in YouTube. So, so yeah, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep smiling and have a wonderful day. Sorry. On my shoulders makes me happy. Ooh, 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 ah. I got Reese's puffs in a bowl and I'm driving on cruise control. Did it? Okay. Anyway, that's a song my brother sings to me all the time. Oh my gosh, this camera is so fancy. I have to go so far away.